Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put together some checkboxes and how you can query the state of this checkbox to affect other components in your game world. So in this example, I've got toggle these. These are two checkboxes. Next to them is the state. Uh, zeros and ones, true, false. So zero means unchecked. So here in this open black space, I have components that are listening to the state of these checkboxes. So if I click this one, there, yeah, this one is visible. Uncheck it, hides it. See that? And the same down here. And notice that these are exactly the same instances of some sort of component, and these are the exact same instances of checkbox. But these two items at the top are directly tied to each other, and the items at the bottom are tied to each other too. So checking this one won't show hide the top component. It'll only show or hide the one that it's linked to. So it's actually fairly easy to put into your game. Uh, you can use checkboxes for toggling on and off certain effects in your game. This is going to be very useful for a settings room. because so Every user is different. There can be some effects that they like more than others and a checkbox is a good way for them to deselect or select the things that they like the most. Cool, so let's jump straight into this code and I'm going to show you exactly how you can create checkboxes and tie them to components. Cool, so this is my project file. I just have two sprites here. One is a checkbox. It's got two sub images, one where it's not checked and the other where it is. I've got the unchecked as a default first, that's a zero, and the checked as a one. Notice zeros and ones. The cool thing about this component is that we can actually use its index, its image index, to determine its state. It's pretty cool stuff there. So we can either create a variable that holds its state, you know, checked or unchecked, or we can just query its index. So that's gonna be pretty interesting. Okay, so that's centered and everything. And then I have this sprite message sort of sort of component. Actually, let me trim this. Cool, there we go. There we go. So that could be anything. It doesn't have to be <laughs> a big big sign that does nothing. It could be a section of your settings. Maybe your checkbox is enable effects. And then below that you have slider bars that control how much of a certain effect the user experiences. So if the user doesn't want any effects, perhaps they can't handle it on their device, they can uncheck that section and then it can just hide it entirely. How cool is that? And they don't have to worry about it, or can disable that section. Um, so that's really great. So let's go into objects. Oh wait, actually in my background, I've just got this background that says toggle these and you know, show hide those, don't worry about that. Um, I've got a small font, and the room is just our game world, it just has the background currently set up. So in here later we'll we'll put those messages, and they'll be by default uh, invisible, because the checkboxes will be unchecked, and we'll put the checkboxes here, as many as we want. Cool stuff. So let's create object checkbox. Cool. And it's going to be given the checkbox sprite. Firstly, because we have a sprite with multiple sub-images, we need to make sure that the image speed is zero. So we don't want that flickering between the two. Then its default state is going to be false. Checked equals false. Now here's where we tie our components together. You don't necessarily have to do it in the create. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is creating an instance of that other component, that one that says this is a component, and I'm going to be taking its ID, which is created on the fly at that point, and I'm going to be storing it in this checkbox. Now, if you want this checkbox to be linked to multiple components, you can just create them all here or grab their IDs, and then when you want to, uh, and then when the state of this checkbox changes, you just cycle through all of the IDs in some sort of data structure, an array perhaps, and you just change properties. You could make them invisible, you could make them disabled. Um, you can make them move. You can do anything you could possibly want. So in here I'm going to say var a equals instance create uh, let's say x plus 500 it's going to be to the right of it y and oops object message. I haven't created object message yet. But anyway, so we're creating an instance. We are storing a reference to that instance in a variable called a. It's a temporary variable. We don't really need to know about it later on. Then what we're doing is I'm saying a dot visible equals checked. Cool. So because checked is a true false, it's a boolean. Uh, visible is a boolean. So if that's false, this is false, and this newly created instance of this object will be invisible. How cool is that? Then 
now that we have that instance stored in this variable, we have access to something called its ID. Now that's its unique identifier. If I say a.id, I'm going to grab the identifier of this newly created instance. So here I'm going to create a variable called, I don't know, something about message instance ID. And I'm going to set it to a.id. Now here I could have an array, and every time I create one of these, I could store it in an array and then loop through it later. But currently, because I only have one component, I only need one variable to store it. All right, so at this point in time, this checkbox is linked to this instance of this object. But we haven't created it yet. We'll get to that in a bit. Cool. So now we need to change the state of this checkbox. We're going to use a left pressed event, grab, drag in some code. Now here's a cool thing. Image index plus plus. If you're using gm8, you can use plus equals one. And just by using image index plus plus, we're basically just cycling through the indexes. So here, if we click this, that's what it's going to be doing. It's looping that image index because there's only two. So if it was zero, it becomes one. If it was one, it becomes zero. So that's the only line we have to type in to do all that. And then here, I'm going to say checked equals not checked. And that says, well, if checked is true, then checked is not true, which is false. If checked was false, then checked is not false, which is true. It's just the opposite of what it is. Then now because the state of the checkbox has changed, we could either go into our object message and we could be we could have a step event that, that always listens for the checked state or in our actual checkbox. Here we can say with and then what that variable was called that we store that ID message instance ID visible equals other dot checked. Now remember, because we're in the scope of this instance, remember that ID is going to uniquely identify that instance, which happens to be that little message box. We're going to set the message boxes visible property to the value of checked that exists in the other components. So it's stepping out of this scope and back into our checkbox. That's what other means. So we're grabbing the checked variable of object checkbox and we're setting visible to that. And here you can add any other properties that you think this specific instance should have. So here you can do some checks and say, well, if other dot checked, then show the slider bar, set its value to 100%, do this and that. Else, you know, hide it, set its value to zero, all kinds of things like that. You have great control over the objects that are tied to this checkbox. Then just for completeness, I'm going to add a draw event so we can draw the state. So first we need to draw self, otherwise it's because this draw event's overrided the default draw. We're going to draw set font to FNT small. We're going to draw set our color. And here I have a constant called SX Games Lime. We're going to draw set, ooh, draw set our alignment. To FA left. And finally, draw text. And this is going to be hmm, x plus 50, so it's to the right of our checkbox. I'm going to keep the y the same. And we want to draw a string equivalent of the checked variable. So that's all great. So that's going to be 0 or 1. Here you could uh, you could do an if else and say if, if checked, then draw the word true, or draw the word false. But um, we don't really need to have this. This is more like a debugging story. We can see on our room. So check to be true or false. Well, in other words, zero or one, if we try draw that as a string. Okay, so now let's add object message. Give him that sprite and that's done. How cool is that? That's all we need to do in object message. So like I said before, in the left pressed, this is where we're changing the state of everything tied to the checkbox, lines four to seven. We could always just leave that out completely 
So just change the image index and the state and then have every instance that uh, listens for it in here. But that's not as dynamic because if you think of it, this message is created in this create event and that's where it's all put together. So I do suggest you change the states of the components tied to these checkboxes in the checkboxes themselves. Cool, so let's save this, put it in the room. Now we can add as many checkboxes as we want. There's one there and one down here. That doesn't have to be exact, cool. So as soon as these are created to the right of them, they're gonna create a message. And depending on how we toggle those, the message is gonna be shown or hidden. Let's save this and run. Okay, so here we go. Toggle these to show hide these. We click it, it shows it. Unselected, it's hidden. It's pretty cool stuff. And there we go. I do suggest if you are gonna be directly using this kind of method to show or hide settings in your options room, for example, that you also create a can click variable for each of these components if they are interactable, because even though they are invisible, they can be interacted with. So, you know, just be sure that they cannot be changed if they're invisible, for example. That would be a good idea. So there we go. I hope you guys found this really simple tutorial both educational and helpful. If you have any questions about this, just stick them in the comments and I can get back to you. If there happen to be any other components that you would like to see implemented in GameMaker and you don't exactly know how to put them together, just uh, suggest a few in the comments below. I can see if I can try and imitate their functionality in, in GameMaker, just as I've done with Checkbox. And uh, yeah, we can help you as well as many other people. Feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. You can get the project files straight in the description. If you like this tutorial, as well as many of my other ones, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. I'd also like to take a moment to wish you all a happy festive season. Stay safe on those roads. Until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.